Are you serious? Yes, there are plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Right now, you are killing some time with I, Marcus Bronzy. And me, Nick Bright. What's good? I'm good, man. How are you doing today? Yeah, man. Not too bad. Not too bad. Been a couple of weeks since the last uh, the last time I caught up on the pod. Exactly 14 days. Wow. Exactly 14 days. And I think we should just jump straight into it on right. today's show. What have we been up to? Well, we have been playing all kinds of games, like loads of different types. In fact, we uh, we had a little bit of VR action. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had regular PlayStation action. Mm-hmm. We've even took it to the mobile phone. We had app action as well. Mm. We five for Feb is what we're calling it. Five for Feb. Five apps for Feb. Exactly. Makes sense. Alliteration. Mm, everybody likes alliteration in audio, man. Likes alliteration. No, I'm trying to. Yeah, 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 that is a bit of a bit of a crowbar there. Okay, cool. But yeah, they do, and it, and it works. But um, we found some great things for you to kill some time with that are free. We found some great ways to kill some time that are not that free. Yeah. <laughs> some that are fun. Some that Nick. Well, I'll let you. I'll let you describe those when we get to them in the show. Yeah. But should we kick it off with the apps first, though? Yeah, man? go for it, man. Like, right, what was the first app you got your hands right. on? So the first app that I got my hands on was Retro Soccer. So basically, this is uh, an app that you can play. It's exactly what it says on the tin. It's available on Android and uh, iOS as well for yeah. Apple. And essentially, it's a retro style football game, but for your phone. Yeah. Now. I'm not. I'm just going to say off the bat. I'm not normally a big fan of football games on phones because immediately when I play, say like FIFA or something like that, you've yeah. got a controller. You've yeah. got like full control over the players. And when it's on like the the touch screen, it's never that good. Like because I know there's FIFA for for um, iPhone. Yeah, never enjoyed it. Didn't really get into it. But this because it's very simple. I quite liked it. Not going to lie. I mean, it took me ages to work out how to shoot, how to do anything. I was pretty much just like, just just, just like hammering on the screen. <laughs> but I managed to win 1-0. You did, you did, you did. Yeah, I played uh, against the Ukraine. I was the all-star team and I beat them 1-0. So you picked the best team that ever could exist and played Ukraine. Well, it just came up as the all-star team. I thought okay. I was picking Ukraine for me because, right. you know, like Ukrainian dons, they're hard. You know what I mean? For I was real? like, these dudes are going to be tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm, but mm. It, it turns out I was playing against Ukraine, but I still <laughs> slapped them up still. You know what I mean? But yeah, so that was Retro Soccer. Uh, it's free, I believe. Yeah, free. Free price. For free, which is uh, everybody's fi- favorite price, let's be honest. Because so we're doing your fave five apps in February. Five fave for Feb. Fave, five fave for Feb. Can we give it a, a mark out of five for I, Feb? I'm going to give Retro Soccer a three and a half. Okay, five. and why is it missing the one and a half to make it a five all star five game? Just because it's very basic, okay. you know, like for a for a football game. It, the thing is, it's weird because the the basicness is a blessing, but it's also a curse. Do you know what I mean? It'd be hard to give a really basic app a five out of five. That's true. That's true. By the way, uh, just quick digression: you can find everything that we speak about in this show. Uh, you've links to it in the show description. Yeah. Uh, or if you just go to howtokillanhour.com, dot com, you can find your five five at five for Feb for Feb. Yeah, you can see the write up about them as well on, yeah. the, on the website. So head exactly. over there. Exactly. So that was retro sock shot sock. Wait, what was it? Retro soccer. Retro soccer, mate. Soccer, you know mate. Mean? What was the next one, mate? Right, the next one. Now, this, straight off the bat, real good. It's called Amateur Surgeon 4. Now, I really, really like this. Apparently, it's uh, from the legendary adult cartoon makers, Adult Swim, the same people that make Rick and Morty, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, Sick cartoon. Which, you know, I, we were talking about this off mic earlier on, and yep. I was just saying, you know, Rick and Morty, I'm not really that into it. I've seen loads of it because my flatmate loves it, and, like, you know, I do watch it because it was on Netflix. I'd sometimes I just put it on. Yeah. But, like, I'm not, like, I don't feel about Rick and Morty the same way I feel about, say, American Dad or Family Guy. Okay, yeah, and you know what? I think a lot of, a lot of people got onto the Rick and Morty hype because they just heard it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, like, trending, but... I, th- I still think it's quite a niche thing because yeah, yeah. the reason I like it is I love sci I love sci-fi right. shit. So as soon as I found out it was like a sci-fi comedy, I'm like, yeah, yeah well, I'm into it. The thing that the thing that puts me off about it is, is like, but I, I get that it's the joke. Is that um, basically Rick? Rick's the the, the yeah. scientist. Rick yeah. Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. Rick talks and burps at the same time. Basically, <laughs> 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 the whole time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's but that's the joke, right? Yeah, yeah. 
I was like, what is this? Why is this guy keep burping? Because I, I didn't see it from the start. I'm just seeing random episodes yeah. every now and then. Um, and anyway, a little bit of vomit at the side of his mouth yeah, sometimes as well. A bit, bit weird, yeah. Anyway, back to the game. Amateur yeah. Surgeon 4. Essentially, you become a surgeon and you have to perform, let's just say, basic operations on different patients. Um, you have to do things like sti- uh, stitch them up, um, kind of take away burns, basic stuff extract weird things that they've got stuck inside them as well um you know make of that what you will the the thing is to talk about this one it doesn't sound like it's going to be that good you're just like "Mm, that sounds that sounds a bit rubbish but actually i really really enjoyed this one out of the game it was it was it was like it was one of the ones that left me going when i like closed it down to play the next one because obviously we had five to get through i was like i wish i could play that for a little bit longer you know i mean it would definitely pass time on the commute um I don't know at this moment in time if you need signal to play it. I'm going to probably say no. Like, so you might be able to use it if you're like on a tube or, you know, you on a plane or somewhere that hasn't got any reception. So, yeah, I really like this one. And uh, out of five, I am going to give Amateur Surgeon 4, 4.5. Nice, nice. And why is it missing the point five? Just because it's hard to give something perfection. I'm this very, I'm very stingy with giving out fives, you know. That's, or f- top I think marks. that's, f- that's, f- that's fair enough. That's fair. That's fair enough. But with with, with regards to amateur surgeon, because I had a go on this as well. It's the tools that you use. You're not actually using proper scalpels and stuff. Obviously. You're using like salad tongs, pizza slicer, chainsaw, yeah. you know, uh, Hoover, Hoover and stuff like that uh, in the mix. And and there's a little bit of story behind it, which is kind of if you're familiar with the Rick and Morty style comedy or the sort of adult cartoon stuff. Think like Cartoon Network, but for adults. If you're familiar with that, then you'll get the jokes that yeah. are in it as well. Uh, the cost of it's freemium again free mate yeah no free charge me. what do you think of the prompts to like buy extra coins and, yeah. and life you just passed that most, most most people let's be honest most of us just ignore that yeah, shit yeah. like I can't think of a game that has hooked me enough a freemium game that's hooked me enough to make me go yeah I'm gonna spend some money on this game like I can't think of one you're right I've never paid the dollar because yeah. even even when um, Super Mario Super Mario Run Super Mario Run it's on iOS yeah that was it yeah 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 even when is it called Run I, 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 I want to be right yeah I think you are I think you are yeah anyway the Super Mario game that's available on iOS even when that came out everyone was like oh you got to pay for it blah 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 I was like nah not gonna I'm gonna play the free one and then just not upgrade exactly but, like lots of people did upgrade you know for that no, no, forget that. Forget that. Played the free one. It was Super Mario Run. Excellent. So that was Surgeon Amateur Surgeon 4. Obviously, it's been doing well because there were <laughs> 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and you can also play a remastered version of that complete with the game with new operations and new, unique story. So it's kind of like four games for one there. Yeah. Uh, the next game we played, Nick, we took it to the AR level. Some AR iPhone business. Yep. Yeah, so this one was Pidgeot. Panic. Uh, so let me say that again. This one was Pigeon Panic AR. So <laughs> this is essentially it, it, as, the best way to describe it is like what you used to do with pigeons when you used to go down a park or whatever when you were little. Shag like, them. Um, is that what you used to do with pigeons? I thought that was what everyone did. Um, I'm sure I've seen a video uh, on on YouTube where someone no? pro- someone probably has. Someone has. Someone has shagged the pigeon. I mean, in this world now, it's 2018. It's fair to say someone has shagged a pigeon, perhaps maybe even this year. Already, someone someone end of January. probably had a pigeon orgy as well because they roll around with loads of other pigeons. What would make you... Porgy. A porgy. <laughs> what would make you want to have that sort of like b- a birdie... So- like why? I don't, I don't understand, Nick. Can you help shed some light on why, is, why this type of bestiality exists? I mean, you talk, to me, you talk to me like I'm the expert on the subject. <laughs> well, Marcus, I'll tell you exactly why this kind of bestiality exists. It's because I haven't got a clue. Like, why would you fuck a chicken? Because there's loads of mental people in the world. But there's surely there's like better things to fuck, like an apple pie. Yeah, but maybe it's the fact that it's a, it's a, a, a live thing. People like an apple pie is not alive. People shag their cars. There's people out there that shag the exhaust pipes on their cars, but it's not alive. I would rather do that. Yeah, but maybe they than want bang a chicken. Yeah, but they might want something squirming. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're disgusting. They're like quite dirt. Chickens are quite dirty animals. You know, they mm. do. They do like my nan used to have a farm, so um, she would say chickens would eat anything. Like you could curl one off 
and throw it on the floor in front of a chicken and it would peck at your shit. Whereas pigs are a little bit more, like they won't eat every, they would eat most things. So chickens are really dirty. And if you're getting close enough to a chicken to get in its vag or anus, <laughs> you're going to learn that quick, man. No one even, like a bird shit. When that drops on your head, that's disgusting. Imagine a bird shitting on your dick. I mean, it's meant to be good luck, isn't it? So, I mean, <laughs> you know, may- maybe they do it because they're like, I need to pull on Friday. Better shag me, better shag me pigeon on Thursday then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway. Pigeon panic. <laughs> AR. Let's get back on point. <laughs> right. It's what you used to do as a kid when you'd see loads of pigeons in a group. You'd run at them to scare them off, right? Not shag them. No, not shag okay, them. Cool, especially yeah. when you were younger. I mean, mm. I don't know what your upbringing was like, Marcus, but, you know, I weren't really... It's for another podcast, like mate. It's for another day. Yeah, that's for the one you record on a Wednesday. The, the, the Marcus, Marcus Bestiality <laughs> Marcus cast. Marcus weeps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So... It's basically you running a load of AR pigeons. Yeah. So you can see, using the iPhone camera, you scatter some food around, right? Mm-hmm. And you can see your surroundings. So mm-hmm. it looks as if, you know, you're, you're, you can see where actually where you are, the park, yeah. whatever it may be. Throw some food around and then some pigeons land and you have to try and scare off as many of them as possible in a certain amount of time. Now, we did this in an area in the uh, How to Kill an Office HQ, mm-hmm. how, to, how to Kill an Hour Office HQ, I should say. We did it in an area called the Atrium, which it's quite an it's quite a large outdoor space. Not really big, but like you know, you can run around out there. Yeah. And it still wasn't big enough. It wasn't. You actually need a park. Yeah, because when I was doing this, and also with the Atrium, it's worth pointing out that I looked absolutely crazy when I was doing this. If you see the video, which will probably be on um, the How to Kill an Hour website, we will put a link to this in the show description. So basically, I was running around trying to catch these pigeons or scare them off. But in the atrium, people's offices look into the atrium. Yeah. So there's people trying to do work in that. And they're just looking at me running around, looking crazy. And then some of the pigeons were like technically in those people's offices. So I couldn't get at the pigeons. Yeah. So I couldn't scare them off. So I didn't actually complete this game. Um, So I can imagine, you know, maybe in, in the summertime in the UK anyway, if you live somewhere hot, then it don't really matter. But like in the UK or somewhere else where it's freezing in the winter, this ain't really one for, for the winter time. But in the summer, when it's baking, you take yeah. a disposable barbecue to the park, got a few drinks. Ha- you know I mean, it's fun. It's free. And before I ask you for your out of five, I realize that well, you're recommending we play this outside in a park area yeah. where you're probably quite likely to find real life pigeons. Yeah. Does that take away a little bit of the necessity from this game or is there enough fun in it with the the way that it's played to make it sort of like, you know what, instead of fake pigeons, I'd rather chase these, sorry, instead of real ones, I'd rather chase these AR ones. Well, I guess the difference is on this, you, 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 you've got like a score. Mm. It keeps score for you and it's like, I think it was like 80 pigeons or something that was the maximum amount yeah. and like you're trying to scare them all off whereas in real life, if you were doing it in real <laughs> life, you don't know how many you're scaring off. <laughs> yeah, you know fair I mean? enough, fair so enough. So like, all right. So that's, I, I guess that's, that's it really, you know, okay. uh, out of five, free app, <sighs> one that you can play outside, it, you use AR, so you point your camera at the floor and it makes fake pigeons for you. What'd you give it? Nick? I didn't really enjoy this man. Not going to lie. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this a two. And why, why the two? Just because I'm lazy. All the <laughs> running around upset me a bit, you know? Like and, and I, not, not, not even just, I just thought it was very basic, you know, right. and, and not basic in because there's another one that we're going to talk about um, in a bit, which is really basic, but super fun. But this was basic and it wasn't the good basic for me anyway. Didn't hook you in. Nah. Didn't hook you in. No. All right. Well, the next one wasn't very basic. It's another AR one. Table zombies. How'd you find that? Yeah, now this was mad. It's, It's basically like, like Marcus said, it's AR, but you have to print out a piece of paper with the, like a, like a picture. Well, it's like a poster, doesn't yeah, it? Like a zombie poster. I was literally yeah. going to say, it's like a movie poster for mm. table zombies. Yeah. Um, Here you go, whip it out. There, there it is, yeah. And it says, bring the fight to the table. So what they, what you do with that is you put that on the table and then once you get into the game past the menus and you, you go, you know, new game or whatever, you then point your camera, your iPhone camera, at the piece of paper and up pops a map, essentially. Up pops like a landscape. And even within that landscape, you know, there's like a, there's like a few buildings, crashed police cars or just crashed cars in general, as well as like soldiers who are your friends fighting zombies and you're kind of like elevated up high. So I like to imagine that I'm in a helicopter when I was playing it. Yeah. And I'm like the helicopter support. You want a helicopter? I, I make you right. Yeah. 
and I'm up there shooting zombies and stuff. And it was basically like five waves. So kill the first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, and done. Mm. There was, if I remember correctly, there was five different types of gun mm-hmm. which you could use, which were which was decent. Gave you a bit of variety. Took me a little bit of time to work out that there was a little black box. I was too I was too transfixed on you know the zombies and that. There's a little black bar on each of your weapons, and that's your ammo. But you don't have to collect ammo. But once the black bar is down to the bottom it takes a little bit of time to rejuvenate back to the top so i was just like clicking on weapons and just like hammering the screen like why are they shooting and then like i realized that there was a kind of ammo mechanic that you needed to stick to some weapons like there was a gatling gun which obviously you get way more out of than a rocket launcher where you only get one shot Mm -hmm. so yeah i thought it was good i feel like it's definitely one that you're you can only really play at home or in the office. You're not really gonna whip this out on the train or the tube or the bus. Yeah, excuse me. Can you do you mind just? Yeah, I'm using that seat for my it's table like, zombies. Is like someone sitting there? Yeah, um, I'm playing table zombies, so yeah. uh, you can't sit there, mate. Soz. Um, so yeah, just for that for that reason alone, um, that's why it's gonna get marked down three point five. Really good though, um, but just due to the the pure fact that you can only really do this at home or yeah. you know, at work on your lunch break or if you've got a safe boss anytime um yeah 3.5 quick quick word about this game i think it's really show it shows you an example of the way ar works so you know pointing your phone at like with pokemon go that was a good example of how ar can work yeah this looks really really cool and i feel like one of the reasons where one of the places that it's lacking is that it's a great mechanic, sort of, it's like the way that the weapons are set up. It looks visually amazing. You can move the paper around and the app doesn't stutter at all, really. No. Uh, you know, you pretty much have to turn the paper over for it to stop working. But I feel like it could do with a little bit more story in there. Like, I would love a game where there's a story that encourages you to walk around yeah, a bit yeah. of paper or the or, or the map and explore it in 3D, but through your phone on AR. Because yeah. it wasn't really 3D in, in the sense of, like, obviously the... the, the uh, the landscape or map that appeared was yeah. was three D, but it was it wasn't like you had to navigate your way through anything. You yeah. just kind of stayed in one place and just shot for yeah. ages. But it's it's early days of this tech yeah. really, isn't it? So you know, wouldn't mind a fighting game. Like I had a little monster, you had a monster, and we just fought them. And your, my phone was pointing at the paper, and your phone was pointing at the paper. I like, love that. A bit like Digimon. Digimon, ex- just like Digimon, Updated just like Digimon for the AR generation. Exactly. Trademark: How to Kill an Owl. You got to pay us fifty percent if you come up with that. Anyone? Sixty percent, man. That's what I want. Sixty. Uh, next game, please, Nick. Right. Last but not least, then the creme de la creme de la creme de la creme. Five, four. Feb is Paper Bin AR. Now, this is the game I was talking about earlier when I said about um, finding the right level of basicness because this is so basic. It is essentially a bin and a piece of paper or lots of bits of paper and you're flicking them into the bin. You know, like when you're in the office and you just you just screw up a bit of paper and dash it in the bin. Mm. It's that, but you don't have to have any of the mess and it's on your phone. So... Yeah. There's like different ranges. You can put the bin in very easy, easy, medium or hard. Very easy was very easy. Easy, very uh, easy was also quite easy. Uh, medium, I think medium is where I was at. I found my level at medium. I was I was okay. I could get 10 in a row. Right. I wanted to get 10 in in a row before I quit medium and put it on hard. And then when I put it on hard, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try and do five in a row. I was there for ages. I try and do three in a row. I was there for ages. <laughs> Kept getting two and then flopping on the third one. The pressure. And then I finally got three in a row and could uh, and could stop. But again, this was very basic, but it's the right side of basic because what I just described is essentially it. Mm. There's nothing else really to it. There, there was a global leaderboard. I think I was uh, at the top of the global leaderboard when I was playing. Really? I, yeah. I didn't know whether you were just saying it because we have put this uh, on the YouTube. There'll be a link to this, in, to this in the show description so you can check if whether Nick's telling the truth or no, not. No, but no, no. You, you were a world champion today. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know how many people had played today and how many people have the game, but mm-hmm. out of everybody who had played the game today, I scored the most uh, bits of paper in the basket. I, fe- I think it's fair to say about a zillion people were playing today. Yeah, I, I think so as uh, well. You were number one out of a zillion. There, there was, I mean, the whole globe was probably playing, yeah. Mm. Uh, how, how about the price of this, Nick? Again, free, and it's available for Apple and Android. So mm. Uh, mm. download that, have a go. See, what, I mean, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I did enjoy it. I'm going to give that a four out of five. There you go. That's our top five for Feb in terms of apps for you to get your hands on. Like I said, and I keep saying, if you want to check them out, 
Just go to the links in the show description. We made it easy for you. Or go to howtokillanhour.com and look out for the 5 February app. So that's the freeness from freeness. the February 5 apps that we've told you about. Free apps for Feb. That's Free right. faps for Feb. Free faps. faps. <laughs> or a FWAP. Uh, we also played some games that cost some money. Yeah. Um, first things first, Nick, we put you in some VR today. Yeah. Um, just a moment. And we took you out of the AR world that we've been talking about a lot. And we put you into the VR world, right? Yeah, we played uh, on the Oculus Rift. The, uh, the game was called Skyfront VR. Now, essentially... We just sum it up for you. It's it's a first person shooter where you are flying around a landscape that is like floating mountainy type looking things. Yeah. Best way for me to describe it. You're you're flying around and shooting people. Uh and this was all online. So you're playing against actual people out there who Let's be honest, nine times out of ten when you play online are sixty five billion zillion trillion times better than you. There are people whose full-time job is to play a specific game, and I believe all of the people that were in the office today that was the Battlegrounds were permanent staff, and you were somebody who was in on their first day, and you didn't even know what a coffee machine was. Yeah. That's I'm, how I feel you were treated today. I was getting slapped up left, right, and centre, but see, the problem with me, this is why, this is why I tend, personally, it's just personal preference, I know I'm the minority as well when I say this, I tend to not so much enjoy playing online gaming like most bit like i know most people nowadays play online and they love it and blah blah i don't like playing online because i get a personal vendetta against people like especially on a, on a game where you're going against someone in something so if i get killed you know it says davy killed you i'm like right davy it's me and you for the rest of the time like everyone else might as well not be there Oh, and then that puts pressure on the rest of your game, and 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 and, you, and you're too busy looking for Davy, yeah. and and you don't you don't see Simon That's behind your I'm back saying. trying to kill you. But then even if Simon kills me, because he weren't the first one that killed me, it's like forget you, Simon. Davy's got to get yeah, it. I'm only about Davy. Davy's got to get it. I can't help it. Every single game that is like this, it happens to me. Call of Duty, Battlefield, you name it. Good example though, actually, Call of Duty, because it's kind of. I would say a good way of describing this is if you know about the first person shooter Call of Duty, which I'm going to presume you do. I'm just going to put out it's such a classic title uh, franchise even. This is like COD, but you literally can just fly like you just hover around. You can fly and you can grapple as well because you get with the because you're using both hands. We use this with the Oculus Touch and you can use have any weapons in either hand but if you want to fly around or grapple you must have the grapple in one of your hands yeah. how did you find being able to float over to a place and then flip open to like a rocket launcher and a gun and fire both at the same I, time I imagine it's one of those things that once you get the hang of it you it's just second nature but at first especially when you're playing against people who are clearly really good at first the, the, the handicap for you is just like trying to flick between the different like guns and the grapple it's just like trying to do it quick was so difficult so like i would have to end up looking because obviously you can see your hands or when you when you uh use the oculus rift you can see your, the controllers you can see them when you look down yeah. i was having to like look down all the time to work out what i was flicking to and blah 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 and then when i'd look up bang dead <laughs> one Bosh. of them ones in it so like that was a little bit annoying yeah. and also it's worth pointing out that this is vr um so you are, you you do need to physically actually move. It's one. It's a, it's a it's a VR game where actually you do have to physically move because you know some of them you don't actually have to move. You can sit like, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one you have to kind of like turn your whole body three sixty and stuff like that. Which you know it was fun, but I nearly fell over a few <laughs> times because it's it's mad. Like when you got that thing on, like especially when you're looking up and you're looking round, you look at like you know you lose your balance. It could be quite dangerous. And then um. Also, the the wires that come out the back of the headset, I ended up literally getting tangled in them about three or four times. Yeah. Because you are turning, you know, looking for people. You're turning, turning, turning. And then yeah. before you know it, you're wrapped up in a VR headset coil. It's undeniable that there's the, the next wave of VR is has got to be wireless. It has it's to be. It's got to be a wireless. I'm very surprised that at this stage, it, you know, w- the technology is easily there. The easily there for yeah. to have a, a wireless VR headset. Yeah. The fact that all of these 
you know units have come out and they're not wireless is you know, a little bit disappointing for yeah, me yeah a little bit disappointed yeah because yeah. you know the, 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 it's easy tech for them yeah. to do yeah I mean because of that and because of I've got to be honest we haven't got the biggest studio to run around and record in I'm more of a fan of the seated games and we have got some seated VR games that we'll be exploring in weeks to come just because you get the whole experience where you can like swivel around and look around but you don't have to worry about running into a wall yeah. and stuff like that because you really do need a bit yeah, of space yeah. for VR but I do like the way that Oculus does set up the, the walls though so you don't accidentally run into stuff yeah, that's yeah. pretty good the safety walls yeah that is pretty good to be fair because you know before v- before VR came out we all heard and saw these stories about like <laughs> you know people are going to be doing all kinds of madness yeah. smashing through smashing their hands through the telly blah 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 but actually because of the uh, the, the basic if, if you don't know what we're talking about if you've never had a go it's essentially when you're playing the game if you get a little too close to something in real life there's like a um, you know blue mesh that yeah. comes up within your vision and that's yeah. kind of that's the wa- that's the walls of reality right there almost mm, exactly uh, one thing i do like though about the about oculus is the the um controllers uh, they feel really accurate for mm. me like they f- and they fit really nicely in your hands yeah um they've definitely they've definitely nailed a good because the controller is important yes you know what i mean like, yes. like i feel like the playstation controller is a good size mm. myself 100% um, whenever i play um, Xbox now mm. I always feel like the controllers are massive bit like, big in it bit yeah, chunky yeah. Yeah. so like the control, controller yeah. size does matter even though it was an iconic controller I mean I don't want to get too hung up on controllers here but even though it's an iconic controller the N64 controller was was ridiculous I heard a lot of people chatting shit about it like do you mean ridiculous in a good way or a bad way <laughs> It, I liked it. Uh, I liked it, but when when you actually think about it logically, it shouldn't have worked. That controller shouldn't. It was it was it was like shaped like a spaceship. <laughs> it essentially had like a big bit in the middle, which went. It, think of the PlayStation controller. If you never had it, if you're too young and you don't know what I'm talking about, if you never had a N64, think think of the PlayStation controller. But the two bits that stick down are a little bit longer, and then in the middle there was one analog stick, and it was on a really long bit that came down, so it was longer than the two outside bits. It like a weird spaceship I like I liked it because for like shooting games like so because that long bit that you're talking about in the middle you used to hold that like, yeah, a, yeah. like a gun and then on the left on the right hand side you do extra little controls yeah, or the long bit also had a trigger underneath it the yeah, Z button the Z, bu- the yeah. Z button the Z button the Z button was like, Z. I mean, it's, listen <laughs> it's, it's a classic controller some, yeah. some people used to hold it like that and other people still even when they used the analog stick still held it from the outside how could you wow they held it from the outside and then used their um, thumb to that's like people that play table tennis and they don't hold the bat facing away from them. They hold it like upside down and the round bit's facing towards yeah. them and they like flip their hand but over that's, that's, table tennis. That's how like all the pros play it. Yeah. If you watch, oh, really? if you watch like the Olympics and that. Well, not all of them, but they do hold it w- like mad weird. If you watch the Olympics, like, a lot of the like Chinese players who are sick at ping pong, they hold it like in a mad way. Techers. And then like when, you, when they hit the ball, because I, it's so quick, the, the movement is so fast. I always try and watch it and see how they're like, not because I'm trying to get amazing at ping pong, just because I want to understand how they do it. Like, but I can't see it because it's so quick. How they hit it is just crazy. Anyway, mm, nice. I digress. Anyway, Skyfront VR. Yeah. Uh, seeing as we're talking about a lot of fives, what do you want to give it out of five? <sighs> it, it's, it's hard for me because I'm not, I'm just going to be completely honest with you, I'm not that into VR. There's nothing in, in the VR world for me, there's nothing that I've played that I've that's grabbed me proper yet. I haven't played a game virtual reality where I've gone oh my god this is amazing so I'm not a big fan of the concept in general but what I will give it is for the VR experience about four a strong four I feel like that's a good fair enough score do you know what I mean it wasn't, it wasn't fantastic but it, it wasn't it wasn't terrible so I feel like four is yeah is a, is fair a, enough. a good score it's, to out, it's out now you can find out for yourself yep yeah. Uh, after that, we threw you into a world that was not VR. We stayed on Steam, though. And can I just say, I'm so happy, and I know Nick is as well, that you can use a, the iconic PlayStation controller that hasn't changed for like 20 years that for much? Ever. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's got a couple of extra bits onto it, but the main shape has been the same for about 20 yeah. years, bruv. Which is, but listen, when it, if it ain't broke. You know what I mean? What else has stayed the same hardware-wise for 20 years? It, phones have changed. Yeah. F- every, like, watches have changed, smartwatches. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. But the thing is, I don't know, we're, we're wandering into 
um, dangerous territory. <laughs> I, I, only because like some people will turn around and say to you, yeah, the shape might have stayed this, uh, the same, but like the control is completely different inside. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's probably things that PlayStation have massively improved within the controller. So, you know, if you're saying what, what's, what else keyboards has that seat? keyboards yeah. and Keyboard, mouse and mice speakers yeah you true. could say because speakers are like all pretty much the same shape but yeah, the inside true. you know it's yeah, loads of enough. things but i get what you mean the point you're trying to make is that most other controls control. yeah, yeah even the difference between say um the original xbox into the xbox 360 into the xbox one you know what i mean like the controller has changed it's become more playstation like yeah i feel Blatantly, yeah. blatantly. I mean, the only people to go super left with it are Nintendo, and mm. they're just on their own craziness. And we haven't spoken about the Nintendo cardboard thing. No. Re- super quick digression. We've got to cover this properly on another show. But fucking Nintendo. It's, it's what they do. They have, like, so there's obviously um, uh, Google Cardboard. Yeah. That is a cardboard device that you use for VR. Nintendo have taken the idea with the Joy-Con control pads that have like motion sensors and they have sort of, and they just have a very unconventional buttons in different places and they've created these cardboard devices that you can buy and use your games in totally different ways. I saw someone turning their controllers or game into into like a piano yeah and stuff like that you can like you can do all kinds of madness with this crazy yeah and there were people it looked like they were i need to investigate this before we cover this in an hour looks like they were dry like they were using their control pads to move some sort of uh cardboard robot and i don't know what they were you like you they were using nintendo components to make it happen it's mad need to look into that the possibilities could be massive with that though you know yeah we need i think we need to get into that but we're talking about games today it's february we had our top five apps we've had a vr experience we took you out of the vr fire nick thank (laughs) you because i was getting killed on that game i was like i can't take no more of this but then you dropped me in this next one hello neighbor which is I'll let, I'll let you take the lead on this, Nick. It's a different, it's a different game, right? I'll tell you what it is. The first syllable of the first word. Hell. That's what it was. <laughs> this game was absolute hell. Like, you know, the, 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 pre- base, the premise of the game, the way I described it in the video, which um, we'll link to um, in the show description, of course, is it's basically a cartoony version of Metal Gear Solid. You've got to, like, sneak around... In this dude's house, right? So you're a kid and you got to get into this guy's house. I can't even remember why I had to bloody go in his house. You rolled your ball down the road at the start of it and then you saw something. Without spoiling the story, you saw something happen, which oh yes, yes. you shouldn't really have seen. Right. But you want to do the right thing and get into his house and help out. See, I was playing this game for so long, I forgot about that at the beginning. Essentially, yeah, you got to get into his house and find some stuff whilst you're in his house. But the, the the trick is, this guy keeps catching you. Well, he's not meant to catch you, but like if you're me, you keep getting caught. And the thing is, he learns how this game works. Is he learns the ways that you've tried to get in before. So you know, you might play another game where, or a regular game where it's like you'll take the same route every time to beat a boss or get into somewhere and like you might die but then the next time you'll get a little bit further and then a little bit further and a little bit further by doing the same thing this guy learns the routes that you've tried before so like the aim of the game essentially is try not to get caught loads of times unlike me because otherwise he'll learn and he's quick he's pretty crafty isn't he he's quite yeah. sharp yeah, he's very sharp. And the thing is, it's it's quite... Although the game's not not like a scary game, as in like, you know, it's not like a horror game. It's quite cartoony. The music in... Because I was playing on headphones. The music is like... Especially when he's coming for you, the music is very like... Yeah, it's like Jawsy. Yeah. It's very Jawsy type music when he's coming for you. And like, especially if you can't see where he's coming from or whatever, it's just... It's a nightmare. Um, I was sweating when you were in certain certain situations. Nick was hiding around the corner, and you just heard dum 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 dum, yeah. and then you were like sticking your head out to have a little look, and then creeping Bruh. away in the corner. And it, but the thing is, frustrating. It's one of those games that, like, like I said, if you like creeping around, if you like problem solving, if you like trying to, you know work something out or send someone the wrong direction, and then like sneak in behind them and stuff like that, then you'll definitely like this game. But for me, I just got irritated after a while because it was like, 
the, again, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a specific, I didn't even get that far, right? So what I'm explaining to you, some people probably solved this or did, and did this in the first 30 seconds of playing the game, but it took me ages. It's a specific point where it's like, you need to, you need to do something to get to the next part of the game. And like, I just kept messing it up, which meant I kept having to do it again and again and again and again. And I was just like stuck on in loop, essentially. And some people like the fact that as well as that, the game has a kind of, I feel like it's intentional, a clunky feel to it. Yeah, yeah. So you'll throw something down. And again, like in another computer game, you'll, th- you'll throw it in the same place every time and it'll land in the exact yeah. same place. But I feel like the way they've set up the physics, you might, for example, want to throw a box down and jump on it. But if you don't throw it down at the right angle, the box will just tip over, yeah, yeah. fall off, annoying. or you try and jump. And it's like, to be honest, you got quite frustrated with oh, it, it's bro. It's annoying, man. Like, like you said, like I come from an age of computer games <laughs> where like you point at where you want to throw something and then it just magically appears there. Yeah. Bing! Bing! Perfectly. Whereas this is a bit more realistic. I mean, I guess realistic isn't the right word, but it's a bit more kind of like if your angles are wrong when you put something down, it would just roll away. And yeah. You're like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Like, and if you like a bit of jump scare, which is the kind of uh, that horror kind of vibe to it, uh, and you like a challenge, I think it's really good for you. I mean, I feel like it was quite sinister. Yeah. If I'm, I feel like they've covered it up in a kind of nice glossy look, but it's quite sinister. And I do like the way that when you, you did complete a bit of a level, Nick, and then it kind of... L- gave you a taste of information to give you a background on on why your neighbor might have done what they had done at the start of the game i'm trying not to spoil it start a game and you're trying to help i, I mean i enjoy it i think i'd like to get in, get my teeth stuck into it a bit yeah. more but i would definitely end up going online finding out how to pass a certain part of a level yeah. very early on i don't think it's a sort of game that i could crack all by myself yeah i mean if you can crack this without any help online you are some kind of rain man genius bro mm, exactly so, exactly yeah. so we went for that hello neighbor out of five what do you want to give it um for me i'm giving that a three and that is because it it wasn't really i i, I don't think the game failed but i don't think it was your cup of tea no it just it look it's subjective. There's people listening to this who might play that game and go, oh my God, he gave this a three. This is a straight yeah. seven out of five. This is so good. But for me, it just wasn't the type of, it wasn't the type of game that is built for me. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, it's like I said, it, it, like you said, I should say, it was very glossy as well. You know, it looked good. Decent um, kind of, decent hook, but yeah. just wasn't the right one for me. I th- and, and, and furthermore, that's the sort of game that I... I'm a bit of a pussy so I'd be shook to play that by myself that the pressure would get yeah. to me and I'd be like I want to play something else but sitting in a room it's a sort of game I'd have a go on and as I'd say like every time you lose a life pass on the control yeah, yeah, pass the someone pad. else pass the, life, pad. pass the pad and it's the sort of game where a lot of people would be like oh look look what you need to do you need to no you yeah, need to yeah, do it. Yeah. that sort of thing I can see people getting involved in it uh, it's out on Steam um, if it's out on any, any other formats we'll let you know on howtokillanhour.com uh, as Nick and I have been saying throughout the show find out about everything that we speak about on today's show by checking out the links in the show description or going to our lovely looking website howtokillanhour.com now that's not the final game that we're going to leave you with today nah. uh, we got exclusive hands on on a game that has come out today if you were listening to this on the 25th of January the game is out uh, we managed to get an exclusive playthrough on a beta version a few weeks ago uh, now we have the full day one version of the game uh, and that game is Monster Hunter Monster oh, you can't, you sake can't, you can't say it properly every time Monster Hunter World Monster Hunter World yeah you're hunting monsters Monster can't, oh fuck you can't say it <laughs> Um, yeah anyway Monster Hunter World how did you find like last time you played played a beta they threw us in to a mission and we slayed this semi-dinosaur semi-demon pooey monster whatever it monster it was covered in poo monster <laughs> monster <laughs> yeah um, this this was I feel like this is more the type of game that I would be into to, to be honest with yeah. you it's uh, it's one of those games where you're wandering around, uh, wandering around. I can't talk now. You're wandering around. You're you're kind of finding things for yourself. You're having to collect things and stuff like that. But there's yeah. a story as well. Yeah. Um. This was as as you said. This was the um, the single player uh, story mode that we yep. were playing. So yep. I'm quite into and and this again. This I know this. Lots of people differ here. Some people buy video games and never even play the single player um offline mode they just mm. buy them and go straight online multiplayer but like i yeah. i actually do like the story modes so um 
I was intrigued to find out a little bit more about this. One thing worth mentioning is there is a lot of just gas to get through at the start. You know, like with a lot, a lot of these style of games, and it, and it's a criticism that a lot of people have made of even you know the the, the holy grail of games like this, such as GTA. Yeah. There's there's a lot of talking. Sometimes people just want to play. You know, and I know they have to set things up. I do totally get that because if you if they just went straight in, people would go, "There's no fucking setup. This yeah, is bullshit." Yeah, but like sometimes you do just want to get on and play. But like, mm. you know, yeah. I, I the storyline the storyline is needed. I thought it was good, but they they could maybe speed it up a little bit, or or like give you more of a taste. Like certain other games, you know what a clever thing that they used to do with games is, or well, they still sometimes do, is you start the game as somebody who's got all the powers or a lot of powers and then they something happens and they lose them all or you might start the game as one of the professionals at the end we've got a few powers smashing up this big monster monster mm. and then oh just let me off uh mon- monster and then uh they then say right let's scale it back a bit you are now apprentice their apprentice and you now have to train up you le- or at least give you ways of having a bit of a taste yeah, yeah. a little bit earlier on maybe it's because we were just together and we wanted and we were both like oh let's get to mon- monsters or is it a case where it might be a case where if you're at home chilling and taking your time with it you really really appreciate it for me i would have liked a bit more i mean you played at a reasonable speed you had a bit of fun in fact you kind of pushed through certain bits because you just wanted to get to the yeah, action yeah. when they were th- when there was a lot of talking and that yeah. instead of instead of reading the speech or listening to the speech i was just like bing 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 bing, bing you know because yeah. i just wanted to get through it yeah so if it's something where you just want to get straight into the kick ass kick assery, you got to give it about. I would say you got to give it a nice forty five minutes yeah. hour but before it, you get to the juicy bits. That's exactly how long it took. It, it, it took me forty five minutes basically to get to the first bit of action where yeah. I was like taking on some monsters yeah. or slash dinosaurs, yeah. Th- yeah. whatever you want to call them. But um, you know that was fun once I started. Yeah, doing when you that. did, you got yeah, in, yeah. you went in heavy. I had a hammer, bruv. It was hammer yeah. time. That was a big old piece of hammer yeah, they call me MC Hammer yeah it was definitely hammer time bruv but uh, another great thing about that I noticed is that is the cooperation uh, the co-op stuff they got going on is great you can get co-op for certain quests online as part of your story right okay so when you were going into quests it was showing uh, it was trying to connect online to get involved with other people so I think that's that would be pretty cool yeah. so we've got a few mates they've done their intro to the game especially if they're big monster hunter fa- monster hunter fans you can hop on and kick ass with your mates in the story mode yeah and, w- and we enjoyed that when we were playing the beta version that was fun like yeah. oh yeah quick run around there get that get the knees you know fire this I reckon they've done that because like I said earlier some people are buying games and not even playing the story mode they're just buying games 100%. going straight online so I reckon 100%. they're trying to like they're trying to integrate people to still or encourage yeah. people to still play this st- yeah. the single player story mode yeah. or, or multiplayer story mode yeah. as it is now yeah and in its defense with regards to the complexity of the 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 intro that is probably because it is a very complex game in terms of potions and armor mm-hmm. and setting up your character your character's little helper making sure you've got your attributes in a certain way set up for specific monsters it's very very much a game where it's going from that turn-based... You can see it's come from a turn-based background and it's kind of moving towards that sort of real RPG op- slash open world vibe. Yeah. And it works, but like with Final Fantasy that we've played on How to Kill an Hour last year, you do have to give it a bit of time. So if you want to get straight to the hack and slash, yeah, unfortunately, you know, you have mm. to chill. But, what, but, but bearing that in mind, what do you give it out of five? Out of five, I'm going to give Monster Hunter World a four. That's nice. Yeah. That's quite a nice score. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's out on, on PS4. Uh, I believe that's... Is that out on Xbox as well, Billy? Monster Hunter 4? I think so, yeah. Yeah, we think so. We should know, really. But um, I'm, I'm a play. I'm a PS man. 99% sure. 99% sure. Should we make that? Should we check the 100% now? Billy's just doing some Googling. Live Google on the show right Live. now. Live. Press fast forward 15 seconds on that it's pod app. Google Live. Get through... Uh, here he comes with yeah. a definitive update. Billy's still Googling. We've got some dialogue. He's not on the internet anymore. Let me just check with Maya. Disconnected from the internet. All the porn that he looks at. Monster Hunter. It's all that chicken porn he's been watching <laughs> with you, Marcus. Nah, man. I, don't, I, I really don't like... I don't know. I, there'll be probably be people in a few years fighting for their own rights to get married to their chickens. Cockfighting. <laughs> 
Yes, it is. It is. There you go. Yeah. Xbox One, Microsoft Windows. Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, and, and PS4. PS4. Yeah, get your hands on it. We'll put a link to that in the show description. Nick, I know you have to get out of here because you've been playing a lot of games with us today. Yeah. Thank you for joining us here on How to Kill Now. Before we leave, where can we find you in terms of the work that you're doing and online? Please. Of course, you can find me on all the socials. Nick Bright DJ is yep. where you can find me. Listen to my radio show as well. I'm mm-hmm. on BBC Radio One Extra Saturday and Sunday, 10 until 1. It's 10 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. Talking some shit and playing some tunes, man. That's how we get down. Indeed, indeed. I'm Marcus Bronzy, M A R C U S B R O N Z Y on all social medias. And we are at How to Kill an Hour on all social medias. Uh, like I said, check out howtokillanhour.com. If you want to look for some more ways to kill some time, we'll have videos up and links to all of the content that we've been speaking about on today's show. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with I, Marcus Bronzy. And me, Nick Bright. Bless. 